After a judge sentenced another judge to jail time, chaos erupted in an Ohio courtroom. And taking the defendant into custody wasn't so easy, as a court officer had to drag her out. So today we get to talk about Cincinnati's first black female judge who went to jail on eight felony counts and had to be dragged out of court. This is former Judge Tracy Hunter. Now, Judge Hunter received her Jurious Doctorate from the University of Cincinnati College of Law. Now, Judge Hunter felt she had a higher calling and ran for juvenile court judge in Cincinnati, Ohio, winning by 71 votes, becoming the first woman and first African-American to hold that position. Now, even though Tracy Hunter had no experience being a judge, she jumped in both feet first, trying to make major changes to the juvenile justice system there in Cincinnati. Then controversy hit because the judge started doing some really, really, really insane things. Like for instance, the judge didn't like the prosecutor's office. So the judge decided to have many trials where the judge herself would be both judge and prosecutor and then have a trial about whether the prosecutor in the case should be sent to jail on contempt charges. I apologize for uh, what happened yesterday. Well, it's not the intention of this court uh, to embarrass you in any uh, sense of the matter. It was, to say the least, an unusual session. Tracy Hunter became judge and prosecutor, running a contempt hearing against attorney Jay Clark, calling people to testify and asking them questions. Did the attorneys agree to the time? But if a lawyer objected, Hunter would either sustain or overrule those objections to her questions to her witnesses. Is that correct? Objection pleading. Is that correct? Sustain. I'm sorry, overrule. Bill Gallagher was Clark's attorney at the hearing. You sort of question whether or not you were really in a true courtroom. Um, you hear about star chamber type of, uh, of deals. That's sort of what I felt was going on. Did your honor, Judge Tracy Hunter, tell you what to say at today's proceedings? You weren't sure what witness was going to come next. You weren't sure what was going to be done next and who you turn to for help if the judge is the one that's conducting the hearing and calling the witnesses and, and making all the decisions. What do you recall? We're going to object that calls for hearsay. Statements made outside of the presence of this court being offered for the truth of the matter is certain. Okay, thank you. Overruled. This saga involving attorney Jay Clark is one of Tracy Hunter's many controversies, one the public has not seen yet. Now, even though Judge Hunter was an attorney, she didn't have any courtroom experience. So now you have a person who has no courtroom experience now in charge of running a courtroom. Tracy Hunter is certainly under the microscope. I've spoken with a lot of attorneys and courtroom observers who believe that Hunter may indeed have been well intended before her surprise election, but she had limited courtroom experience and now she's in over her head. Instead of asking for help, she's lashing out at her critics. Now, because of this lack of experience, Judge Hunter found herself in many, many controversies right after she got sworn into being a judge. The manner in which she came to the bench may make her feel that everyone is against her. And they were at the beginning. But once on the bench, the judge found herself the center of concern. Hunter has been named in at least two dozen lawsuits or complaints, most filed by the public defender's office, saying she unnecessarily delayed decisions in about 20 cases, potentially leaving children in limbo over custody or adoption. She's been sued by news media outlets over courtroom and document access, and allegations of backdating case filings are being investigated by a special prosecutor. Now, because Judge Hunter was over her head, she began having panic attacks and had to be taken to the hospital because she couldn't handle the pressure of being a judge. Only not on your side was there when Judge Tracy Hunter was taken from the Hamilton County Juvenile Court building this afternoon by Cincinnati Fire Department paramedics. The incident report says she passed out on the 12th floor of the building. It's similar to another situation on November 23rd when she was rushed to a hospital for what was said to be a panic attack. Through it all, the judge and her supporters have maintained she's been unfairly treated and treated differently than other judges. That's right. The first black female judge is saying she's being treated differently because she's a black female judge. Now, because the controversy became so overwhelming, the judge started trying to cover up her mistakes. Now, one of the ways she tried to do that was back dating cases. This is what she did. As for the allegation of backdating of court case documents, Hunter calls those frivolous and unmerited allegations, 
which are part of an attack and harassment against her by the prosecutor's office. But Local 12 News has learned of another allegation of backdating, this one involving a phone message. An internal memo from the prosecutor's office sent to the special prosecutor details a voicemail left by Judge Hunter's staff for Attorney Jay Clark regarding a different hearing. The memo states, the caller attempts to deceive Mr. Clark about the date the call was made. The answering machine time called function exposes this act of dishonesty. Here's part of the call telling Clark his client will be on Judge Hunter's docket at 9 a.m. on Tuesday morning, the 20th of August. And in a juvenile court entry, Judge Hunter says Clark failed to appear despite several attempts by court personnel to contact him. Bailiff left message 8-19-2013 on voicemail. But Clark says this was the answering machine's record. Message recorded on August 21st at 8.40 a.m. I think that kind of speaks for itself. I, I think it, it suggests there's a serious problem in her courtroom. So understand what the judge was doing. She was scheduling hearings on August 20th in this case. And then on August 21st, she would call litigants and tell them, hey, you have to be in court on August 20th, the day before. And then the judge would penalize you for not being in court, even though they had not told you you had to be in court that day. Matter of fact, they only told you days later. So the prosecutor's office said, Judge, you are forging documents in the courtroom. You've committed a crime. And they decided to indict the judge. To, I mean, ridiculous allegations. I mean, recently, uh, the uh, prosecutor says, oh, you know, she's, she's committed a crime. And I think, you know, I never received uh, detention in school. In all of my years of school, I never received detention, I've never been in trouble. And to have someone accuse you of a crime and say that I'm backdating documents, um, every day it's something. And those are serious it allegations. It is serious. It, well, not only are they allegations, I believe that the, the prosecutor is, is investigating me. Right now there's a criminal investigation going on, as far as I know. And I'm really at the point to just say, you know, indict me, go ahead. You know, it, it wouldn't be the first time. You know, God has a way sometimes of just giving you um, assurance. So Judge Tracy Hunter got her wish. She was indicted on eight felony counts. Tampering with evidence. She's accused of backdating documents to make it appear that her docket was current. Forgery. She's accused of signing those documents in July of August of 2013. Having unlawful interest in a public contract. She's accused of paying her brother to work in her courtroom. Theft in office. She's accused of using her county credit card to charge $1,100 in filing fees for appeals when she was sued. She twice needed medical attention in her courtroom because of what her supporters say was stress from continued attacks. Now, during her trial, Tracy Hunter started lashing out at the courtroom, saying that this was all nonsense and she took exception with being treated as a criminal. I take great exception to your disparagement of my name in this courtroom today. I'm not sure what you meant by the term that this defendant is gaming the system, but be clear here. The only game that is going on in Hamilton County is by the Hamilton County Juvenile Court, Judge John Williams. And it kept going. The judge tried to stop her, but it didn't work. Hunter just kept chiming in, demanding to be heard. Hunter is accused of several felonies, including tampering and theft. She could be sentenced to 13 years in prison. Now, this case was pretty simple because it was essentially a paper case. You had all the electronic data and all the paperwork showing that things were backdated. So the jury found Tracy Hunter guilty on one felony count, but deadlocked on the other eight. A verdict reached in the judge Tracy Hunter trial. We the jury in the issue joined find the defendant, Tracy Hunter, guilty having unlawful interest in public contract. Guilty of one count, deadlocked on the others. You're unable to reach a uh, unanimous verdict uh, on the rest of the counts. Stern words from the judge. Judge Hunter, this is a sad day for you. As Hunter's supporters sing praises. <laughs> Judge Tracy Hunter could be probation, possibly time behind bars, 
after a jury found her guilty of one felony count. Now, because of the criminal conviction, Judge Hunter was removed from the bench and her law license was suspended. Now, Ohio Supreme Court suspended Hunter with pay after she was indicted back in January. But now, with a felony conviction on her record, her suspension becomes unpaid. And, of course, the state's high court now expected to begin proceedings that could ultimately lead to the end of Tracy Hunter's legal career. So now Judge Hunter has been found guilty of a felony and now has to be sentenced. So here is what happened at her sentencing. I gave her an opportunity to speak, and that was turned down. <laughs> it's not being offered now. Please have a seat. So you're denying my right as a defendant to address the court. Ma'am, please have a seat. I just want to make sure. Thank you. Today, her attorney, David Singleton, is asking the judge to delay sentencing yet again. She lost peace of mind not knowing when that day was going to come that she'd have to go to jail. That's a lot for one person to have on her shoulders. Judge Patrick Dinkelacker has heard the request and is ready to announce Hunter's sentence. But first, he has a message for those self-described registered voters who sent dozens of postcards to his home, asking him not to send Hunter to jail. The attempt was to intimidate me in any way that has flat out failed, okay? I will never, ever, ever bow to that type of pressure, veiled threats, vicious comments, lies about me or anything else. Then everyone in the crowded courtroom anxiously awaits Judge Dinkelacker's decision. Number one, you pay the cost of these proceedings. Number two, you are to do not violate any laws. And number three, you are to do six months in the Hamilton County Justice Center, credit one day. Mr. or Ms. Deputy can take her away. Hunter's supporters are outraged. In fact, keep your eyes on this woman as she attempts to approach Hunter but is intercepted by court officers. Then watch closely as this deputy attempts to take Hunter away. Initially, she seems to resist. But then, perhaps realizing that her time has run out, her body goes totally limp. While shouts of no justice are heard from the gallery, she's literally dragged out of the courtroom. Hunter eventually begins serving the six months at the Hamilton County Justice Center, but she's released early, serving just under three months based on her participation in a court-authorized work detail. So now you may think the story is over, but this entitled former judge wants to still practice law. So she is asking the Supreme Court to allow her to continue to practice law and reinstate her law license. Now, the final chapter of this case, which began in 2014, could come this week as Tracy Hunter heads to Columbus tomorrow in a bid to continue practicing law after her felony conviction. Tracy Hunter is scheduled to appear Tuesday morning before the Ohio Board of Professional Conduct. That's the agency that handles discipline of lawyers and judges in the state, where she will argue to resume practicing law. Following her conviction, the Ohio Supreme Court suspended Hunter's law license indefinitely, and Tuesday's hearing is the final step in that process. Her lawyer declined comment Monday, as did the state's disciplinary counsel. The case enraged many in the city's African-American community, with advocates saying she was persecuted for being a successful woman of color. Yeah, you heard that right. They're saying that this judge, who was found guilty of a felony, who is clearly, clearly corrupt, is only being charged because she's black. The first black woman. So now the lower court decided not to reinstate this judge's license and said, hey, you're a felon. So no, we're not going to give you your license back. Now the judge then appealed to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court came out with a decision. It has now suspended former Hamilton County Juvenile Judge Tracy Hunter indefinitely. Now remember Hunter was convicted of a felony charge of unlawful interest in a public contract back in 2014. This past summer, she argued to get her law license reinstated, claiming the charge was politically motivated. State Supreme Court ruling against her, but since Hunter has been suspended longer than two years, she can apply for reinstatement. So here's the bottom line with this case. You had an inexperienced attorney become a judge, and things just went over her head. It was just too much for her to handle. She didn't know what she was doing. 
And I think it's sad how the community bought into those lies about her being discriminated against because she was black. She was afforded every opportunity to be successful in this job and didn't take advantage of them. She thought she knew what she was doing and unfortunately she committed crimes along the way. And we've seen how hiring someone based off what they are instead of who they are can backfire dramatically. Christina Pearson in Georgia, for instance, or Mayor Tiffany Hinyard in Dalton, who's under FBI investigation. And one thing that they all have in common is that soon as someone challenges something, they automatically go to the race card. I'm being discriminated against. It's because I'm black, which now, since everything is racist, it makes it seem like nothing is actually racist. And I feel shocked that I have to say this, but I think we should hire people and we should judge people on the content of their character and not the color of their skin. Now, as always, tell me where I'm wrong in the comment sections. Tell me, Nate, hey, you're wrong. This is all racism because I honestly disagree with you. Don't forget, like, share, subscribe, do all that great YouTube stuff. My name is Nate the Lawyer, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.